From down the ancient prison's corridor, you can hear the unmistakable sound of chains rattling, grinding, and screeching across the floor. What emerges from the shadows is a vaguely humanoid shape, comprised of hundreds or maybe even thousands of chains. The chains vary in size from thin and razor sharp to big bulky strands that end in all manner of hooks, blades, and otherwise serrated ends. The chained creature seems to notice your presence, and the metallic components of its body begin to excitedly writhe in anticipation. Roll initiative. Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where I, your host, Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, goes back into past editions of Dungeons & Dragons to find monsters forgotten by time and the designers to bring them to your 5th edition campaign. We all know how pesky golems can be, especially as a player. From your flesh golems, to clay golems, to stone golems, to the dreaded iron golem, these guys are quite resistant to magic and have been the bane of spellcasters for a very long time. 5th edition gives us a little bit of a break by not making them straight up immune to magic, but they are still very hard to deal with, and if you don't have magical weapons, mundane items are not going to do much. So this week, I am presenting to you a monster from 3.5's Monster Manual 2, the Chain Golem. This creature is as interesting as it is terrifying, and it fills the niche of having a golem that's around CR 4 to 5 that isn't the flesh golem. So in today's video, we're going to talk about exactly what this thing can do in battle, some modifications that I've made to it that I feel make it a slightly better creature than what we find in the book, and of course some ways that you can use it in your game. So without further ado... Crush your enemies! See them driven before you! They hear the lamentation of the women! So like every other golem in 5th edition, this creature does have resistance to many types of magic. The one unique resistance it does have over the other golems is necrotic energy, and of course non-magical weapons that aren't made of adamantium don't really cut through it in any capacity. But that's all standard golem stuff, right? Let's talk about what makes this creature actually unique. And first off, we're going to look at its movement speed. It has a movement speed of 35 feet, which lets it just barely outpace most other creatures. However, one unique stipulation here is that this creature cannot use the dash action, so its speed is hard capped at 35 feet unless magically enhanced in some other way. So these creatures make great defenders and are able to outpace the party in battle, but if the party does decide to run, the chain golem is not going to be able to keep up with them over a long distance. But we'll get more into that in a minute. As far as attacks actually go, this creature has two big ones. The first is called Chain Rake, and it's kind of your standard melee attack that does damage, with a bit of a twist. So Chain Rake is basically the Chain Golem literally lashing out one of the chains that is part of its body, which means it can get up to a 10 foot range on this thing rather than the standard 5 foot melee attack, and it slashes at one of the party members. This causes pretty alright damage, and it can make two of these attacks each round, which isn't bad. However, this also causes a bleeding effect. Any creature hit by the chain rake attack bleeds for 1d4 damage at the start of its turn. And the only way to stop that bleeding is the DC 10 medicine check, survival check, or if the creature is healed by a spell. This isn't a huge deal, but it kind of chips away at the party's health, and bleed effects are kind of rare in 5th edition, so anything that does damage over time like this that isn't poison related is kind of cool. I also like the flavor of this ability that it's just whipping these chains so fast it's causing cuts so deep that they need to be actually looked after to stop them from bleeding. And if someone in the party does take their turn to stop the bleeding, that's going to cost them an action which isn't always going to be the best choice. And that brings us to our second ability which is called Chain Barrier. This ability functions almost exactly like the spell Blade Barrier. The only difference is that the chain golem is literally using its body swinging around these chains to create the barrier and it's centered on the chain golem, meaning that it also moves with the creature. It is not static like the blade barrier spell is. If anyone is within 5 feet of the chain golem and gets caught up in the spell, it causes massive damage, at least when it's first activated. It also gives the creature 3 quarters cover, meaning they get plus 5 to their AC while this ability is activated. So again, this kind of paints a picture for you. The creature is going to activate its blade barrier ability and then move into the party. It's not very fast, but once it's got blade barrier going, it's going to be very hard to hit and deal with. That said, it can't keep this up and lash out with this chain rake attacks all at the same time. It has to use an action to maintain the blade barrier around it. 
but it's still a very menacing foe that can cause a good amount of damage. Overall, I think this creature is pretty cool in both concept and design, but of course, I've got a couple ideas for how we can improve it a little bit. <laughs> So my first issue with this creature is that it has two main attacks, but they don't really seem to work together. It basically just seems like it's going to activate its chain barrier if it's close to the party and use its other attack if it's within 10 feet, but doesn't really have an opportunity to get close to everyone, which I guess is fine, but I really like creatures where they have moves that play off of each other. So what I did was I didn't actually add a new ability because I didn't want to overcomplicate things. I just changed the way that chain rake works. It's still a 10 foot melee attack that causes the bleed effect and does the same amount of damage, all that stuff. But what I've done is I've added some text where if a creature is hit by the chain rake attack, it has to make either an athletics or an acrobatic save the creature gets to choose. If the creature fails this save, the chain literally wraps around one of their legs or whatever and knocks them prone and pulls the creature 15 feet closer to the chain golem. If doing so would pull the creature into the chain golem square, it is then grappled by the chain golem. This can drastically change the landscape of a combat because you're forcing the players to move around and also possibly grappling them, which is never a good thing, at least for the party anyways. But this also plays into the chain barrier ability very well. Because when someone's knocked prone, it's not really a huge deal because on their turn they can spend half their movement to get up, which they will almost always want to do. However, with this slight modification, the chain golem is then going to pull people closer and once it has everyone close enough where it can get a few characters within its chain barrier, it's going to do its chain barrier ability, thus shredding everyone to bits. And then if the party gets too far away, it gives it a reason to stop its chain barrier and attack the party with its chain rake attack. Because otherwise, once it gets that blade barrier up and running, there's no reason for it to stop really. Plus, I think this ability is fair because it gives them a chance to save to avoid that effect. So not only do they have to get hit by the attack, they also have to fail their save and then that's going to cause them to suffer the consequences. Once they understand the tactics of this thing, it can really add a lot to an encounter and I think that this slight little change makes it much more memorable and exciting. I suppose nothing hurts you. Only pain. So as far as lore goes, the only thing we really have to go on, from the books anyways, is that these creatures were created by chitons otherwise known as Chain Devils. Now that makes a lot of sense, does it not? Generally they're used as any other golem is, as a servant to its master who created it, being the Chain Devil in most cases, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be created by, say, a powerful wizard or whatever the case may be. So having that freedom to kind of let these creatures act as agents of their creator gives you an excuse to throw them in almost anywhere. One place I really like this creature is in like an ancient or extra palinar prison. Maybe it's an abandoned prison, or maybe it's still up and running, but whatever the case is, these creatures make thematically cool prison guards. Literally masses of living chains that reach out and grab prisoners to pull them back if they try to escape. Also, what helps with that thematically anyways, is that these creatures excel in tight spaces. So in long corridors, going up against a chain golem is much more treacherous than out in the open. Specifically because of its blade barrier ability, where if it can knock you prone and pull you close enough and do that, you don't really have much room to navigate away from the creature. If you want, if you want to be really cruel, you could put your players in a position where there's a chain golem at either end of a dungeon hallway. If they both activate their blade barrier ability and start getting closer and closer together, the party only has so much time before they're going to start taking just gross amounts of damage or have to just chance it and run through. That would definitely be a tough encounter, but it's an idea. I also thought you could go a bit of a more supernatural route with this creature, and instead of making it a golem, as we traditionally understand golems to be, it could be like a spirit or some kind of ghost. Maybe in the depths of an ancient coliseum or some noble's ruined castle, in the slave quarters where the slaves died, they were so angry and their malice literally manifested into this chain ghostly creature, kind of like a revenant. I mean, there's tons of different ways you could spin this, but ultimately I think this creature is super cool and quite versatile. And all in all, I think this creature can be an excellent addition to just about any campaign. Plus, if you want to use golems at lower levels, like I said before, this gives you a bit of variety because it's still a golem, but it's not a flesh golem. Whereas the flesh golem, if you want to have that in your game, you're basically forced to have it as the minion of a necromancer or something going on because they're very thematically specific. Whereas a chain golem, I mean, it's got a lot of theming and ideas with it, but it could be created by just anyone, really. Be aware, of course, it will present a pretty big challenge, but 
still it's low enough where it's not like the iron golem or something that's just gonna wipe out a low level party anyways that is all i've got for today on these gruesome golems so hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about this creature and hopefully you found this video to be at least somewhat helpful if you do enjoy what i do here please i encourage you to subscribe to the channel i have at least one new video every week and of course if you want to follow me on reddit Twitter, that's where I spend most of my time nowadays. Uh, you can find links to all that stuff in the description below. We've got a Discord channel set up there as well, which we've got a lot of good conversation happening on there with myself and other DMs, so definitely check that out. And I do have a Patreon set up now as well, so if you are able to support the channel in that way and you are interested in checking that out, uh, you can find a link to that in the description below too. If you've used this creature in the past or had it used against you, definitely tell me about that in the comments below, or maybe you've got a story about a chain golem from a past game. Whatever the case is, I'd love to hear about it. I love hearing your guys' D&D stories. As always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video.